Yeah, the only predictable thing is that things are unpredictable and, and certainly when we look back at the last three or four years of, of research uh, in soybeans, whether it's Roundup Ready soybeans or whether it's food grade non-GMO soybeans, we see a lot of benefit to incorporating residual herbicides in those systems uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because it, it tends to uh, have more consistent control. Uh, we get early season control and so uh, that alleviates the pressure on a post-emergent herbicide having to be spot on perfect. It also alleviates the logistical pressures of farm managers that have to deal with thousands of acres, uh, uh, multiple enterprises, livestock, uh, haying, uh, and, and everything can't be timed perfectly, especially when Mother Nature doesn't cooperate or when you get equipment breakdowns. So uh, we're seeing a lot of benefit to adding residual herbicides. And then, then also, too, that alleviates the selection pressure of only using glyphosate, for example, in Roundup Ready soybeans. We're, we're adding different modes of action, which can be beneficial from a, a resistance management perspective. So that's, that's the one thing I'd, I'd urge people to at least consider on a portion of their acres this coming spring. Yeah, I mean, site preparation's everything. P people understand that you want to start off with a clean field. You get best so seed to soil contact with the soybean crop. You don't want that crop coming into a weedy environment. So what do we look at when we're out in the field? What do we prioritize? And there's been a trend to a lot more vertical tillage, uh, trying to manage corn stalks. That's been a good thing in terms of even reducing the amount of perennial weed pressure like dandelions. And when you do a drive-by look of a, a vertical till field, it still looks pretty good for dandelion pressure. But once you get inside, you, you do still see some, and I just want to go through the, you know, what our approach is here. So this is dandelion, right? We have two different species here. One is clearly about five inches in diameter. The other one here is about 11 inches in diameter. So when you get a dandelion plant this large, uh, it's going to take more product, uh, more glyphosate in particular. Uh, but you want to look around and see, well, do I also have the potential for seedling dandelions? And so if we look over here just a little bit more, we see a seedling dandelion plant right there. So we have an environment here where we have both large dandelions and seedling dandelions, and this stuff kind of causes havoc later on in the wheat crop. So how do we manage this best? You want to assess what you have in the field and what's the best approach because even if you went over this again with a vertical tillage tool, it would certainly take out these seedling dandelions, no problem, but it's still not going to address these. So you'd want to look at what product to use. And so, you know, you look at, you assess the perennial weed pressure and the products that you need to, to start clean. Yeah, so this, uh, what we have here in this field, we were just walking through this field, I noticed one species in particular that I, I don't like to see, and that's Canada flea bane. And as I've mentioned before, uh, Canada flea bane, we have glyphosate resistant populations in Ontario, right? So uh, the challenge with Canada flea bane is it comes up in the fall typically, sometimes in the spring, and because it germinates throughout the fall, uh, 12 degrees Celsius is kind of a trigger point for germination. You'll notice you'll see plants that are really small, and then others that germinated earlier on. And so here's the take home message, right? We wanna get rid of this plant before we plant that crop. Because if we don't, if we allow, if we plant in and try and deal with this once the crop's out of the ground, uh, the, the public research has shown that no products provide over 60% control of this species. And then, then we start to lose 70, 80% yield loss if we have a lot of, of this weed around. So we want to manage it prior to planting the crop. How do we do it? Well, tillage can be effective. Uh, keep in mind though, tillage is going to be very good at taking out those small ones because they don't have much of a root to them, very little root. But these bigger ones are going to be a bit more of a challenge, right? They have more fibrous roots. Um, and so unless you do a really good job of rooting those up, you're not going to fully control them. So tillage can work, it totally can, but it, it needs to be aggressive enough to take out larger plants. 
Uh, on the herbicide front, let's just assume it's glyphosate resistant. I can't tell by looking at it whether it's glyphosate resistant or not, but again, if we don't control it before planting, we're euchre. So get her done before the soybean crop comes out of the ground. Thank you.